right, we are rock and roll here on the show on Shaw TV, episode number 70. And that's part of the reason I'm wearing this suit. We got the place decorated up, not because I lost a bet, but we're also celebrating volunteerism. Of course, the show on Shaw TV is actually pretty much run by volunteers, and we're actually simultaneously shooting some shots for a national Shaw TV show on volunteerism, so make sure to check out that coming up in April. In terms of the show today, our musical guest behind me right now, we've got the big mess. Now, that usually refers to the scene when Andrew Roberts is doing his taxes, but in this case, it's actually in the Nine Father Son duo, who are going to play some very entertaining tunes, and uh, we're going to hear more of those tunes later on, as well as an interview with Matthew Hoffman later on this hour. Also on today's show, we're talking food, which is awesome, because I haven't had any breakfast yet, so we're going to have a great food demo with Anna Bosa, cooking with Chef Daniel Karim, who's actually one of a number of Nanaimo's best restaurants over the last uh, couple of years. Some great street crafts, so I'm looking forward to what they're going to rally up for us today. In a segment that Andrew Roberts should probably watch based on my intro, we're also going to get some income tax tips from Brian Sugiyama and Greg and Parker, who are actually two volunteer tax assistants. They might be able to help you out as well. Lewis Beck's going to find out the story behind the Nanaimo Unique Kids Organization. What sort of valuable uh, services they provide? Well, we've got Angela and Leah from the group here to let us know. Anna's also going to cast her gaze toward the United Way. It's an organization that supports many charities and volunteers throughout uh, across the world, really. And uh, she's going to be speaking with Sydney Madden, who's the executive director of the United Way here in Central and Northern Vancouver Island. And is going to speak with Sydney about what the United Way is doing in the region these uh, these days. Now, I've got to admit, I'm fan of a good scotch ale, but I'm not really a fan of scotch broom. It's definitely a plant that I thought um, there's nothing to sneeze at, but I guess I'm wrong. So Brian's going to introduce us to Broom Busters. It's a volunteer program that helps limit the spread of scotch brooms throughout southwestern BC. But first, we're going to kick things off on this show about volunteerism by looking at Nanaimo's epicenter for volunteerism and volunteer support. So volunteer time for an hour. Let's get going with the show right here on Shaw TV. Thank you, Matt, and uh, thank you, Big Mess. Uh, I'd say those guys have really got their groove on, wouldn't you? Certainly do. Well, welcome, Marjorie. Good of you to spend time uh, here on the show with us. Uh, I understand that you're the executive director of Volunteer Nanaimo. Yes, I have, for more years than I'd care to say. Can you tell us a little bit about your work with uh, this organization? Well, uh, Volunteer Nanaimo has been around for almost 37 years. And um, I came on, I think I was talking to somebody, they reminded me about 17 years ago, which I only admit to 10 years, actually. But uh, working with Volunteer, Volunteer Nanaimo has been uh, wonderful in terms of working with the nonprofit community and helping helping um, nonprofit organizations and volunteers to connect with each other mm -hmm. so that people that are interested in volunteer can volunteer with organizations that are really doing some good things in the community. Well, I've been doing a little research. You have? A little research, yeah. I went online and I, uh, I see that your uh, mission is, uh, I'm going to quote here, to enhance the quality of life in our community by increasing the impact of volunteerism. Does that yes. pretty much say it? That pretty much says what we do. As an umbrella organization, our role is to encourage and support volunteerism in the community. There are over roughly around 500 to 600 nonprofit organizations in Nanaimo. And um, if they are a charity, 90% of the work has to be done by volunteers. So it's really important to keep volunteerism out in the community forward in the community so that people can connect with agencies that are looking for people to volunteer and to help. So how does Volunteer Nanaimo do that? How does it connect the volunteers with the organizations that need them? Well, we do that several ways in terms of having uh, marketing um, opportunities out there that says, please volunteer. But we also have a website that people can go on. Uh, we, are also, we also advertise in the media weekly about different volunteer opportunities that are out in the community so that people can make that connect connection with the agencies. Oh, I see. Well, um, I noticed Article 2 in your mission statement speaks of building capacity mm -hmm. through management consulting on volunteer programs and management of volunteer resources. Could you elaborate on what that uh, amounts to? Well, basically what we do there, Lewis, is that um, if um, an agency or people come to us and say, we have an idea, then we work with them to try and implement that idea into the community, especially if it's important. One of the things we did just recently, um, about a year ago, is we worked with a, 
an association that was interested in starting a uh, dental clinic for people that can't afford to have dental work done. So we were able to uh, work with them as an umbrella and to help with funding and help with the infrastructure to get that um, dental program open in the downtown area about a year ago. Was it, uh, did it have much success, a great success it in doing that? It has very good success because we heard all kinds of stories about people not able to get dentistry and um, so it was just really nice to be able to do that for folks that really needed to have that done and couldn't afford it. Can you talk about the, uh, the volunteers themselves? I mean, it's obviously uh, the volunteers are having the impact in the community. Can you talk about the impact that the service that they are doing is having on the volunteers themselves? Well, I think that um, people really like to keep busy. They like to be a part of the community and they like to make a difference. And so by having access to agencies and what's going on in the community, they can do that. And they can do that in several ways. They can be part of an agency or they can just go out and help with a fundraiser. And uh, just to talk to you about the impact that volunteers have on community, we have about 36 6,000 people that volunteered officially. And with that, you think about the hours that they put in, four hours a week, over 52 weeks. Um, it's something like 7.2 million hours that people put into the community here. That is amazing, Marjo. So someone who would wish to volunteer uh, in Nanaimo or who might wish to, uh, a vol or volunteer organization who might like to avail themselves of your service, how would they get in touch with you? Well, Louis, they can go to my, our website and it's www.volunteernanaimo.ca. They can also email us at uh, volunteernanaimo at VN at, at, at volunteernanaimo.ca or they can give us a phone call and the phone number is 250-758-7121. That's wonderful, Marge. Thank you very much for joining us. It's been a great pleasure talking to you. Thank you for having Good. me, Louis. Congratulations. Good work. Oh, oh thank oh, you, Louis. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Uh, hi there. I wanted to introduce, we had, today we have Chef Daniel from the Two Chefs of Bear here joining us. And we're going to be making a salad, but there's a special twist on the salad. It is, uh, Matt would love this, menage a trois. Menage is that trois. correct? That is very Welcome, correct. Welcome, Chef. Thank you. Thanks Pleased to be here. <laughs> <laughs> so can you tell us a little bit about the sal uh, what the salad entails the salad with entails the menage a trois? Menage a trois is a seafood. <laughs> menage a trois, three different seafoods. We have uh, a garlic prawns. Uh, fish cake that we make in the restaurant, and then uh, we also use a candied salmon, mm, which we wow. get from locally from up north, from uh, the wow. port of port Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. So it's all part of our salads, and it's one of our very popular salads at the restaurant. So Great. I thought I'd share that with you. That's wonderful. Thank Excellent. You. So what do you, what I've, something's heating up here. Something's I can, heating the up. The oil is. I'm getting. getting uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> we're gonna. What are we gonna do? We're oh. just gonna pan fry that little. The mm, wow. And so this is made with uh, crab right, okay. and uh, rockfish. Little crab cake, would you call it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. basically yeah. crab yeah. cake, rockfish, and a little bit of potato to bind it. And we right. use gluten-free breadcrumbs. Wow, wonderful. So we can accommodate to the gluten-free uh, public right now. That's so right. there's a lot of, there's a lot of people with lot. allergies and intolerances. Right. So we're trying to do that to accommodate. A lot of my meals will be set up so I can be flexible, Excellent. vegetarian, gluten-free. So we could flip to one menu item could you actually be accommodating it's for multiple. It's very versatile. You need to. Wonderful. The more you can yep. make people happy at going out <laughs> instead of being scared of going out and having a tummy ache later. That's right. And that's what it's all and about. And food is all about happiness, I must say. Well, yeah, I want people <laughs> well, to come. happiness is food. <laughs> I want people to come in and have fun and not be scared and right. go home and of be course. happy. And that's the whole idea behind it. It's like wonderful. to have fun. Yeah, it um, is. So yeah. you have a wonderful bowl of greens. Nice greens. Nice Those greens, are beautiful nice greens. Nice fresh greens. Excellent. Um, what we usually do with those, as I'm cooking all this off, getting a little color on here, we're gonna um, just toss oh, this up. Thanks. 
Excellent. Yeah. And so, what's in your dressing? Uh, this is our house-made dressing. It's our roasted right. garlic and oh, herb oh, dressing nice. made with Wonderful. yogurt. So to cut oh. down on some of the calories, instead of being high calorie with mayonnaise or so forth, I like to cutting things down a bit so that way it's you have some he a healthier side. Right, of course. Yeah. So we're trying to be a little bit well, on a nice we're side. We're all trying to be healthy. Well, we're trying. And, and the greens are healthy. And, are. and this looks like beets, is that yeah. correct? Beets, yeah, and then carrots. And carrots. Just now, are the beets cooked? Nope, everything's They're raw. Just raw. That's raw. Wow. I like to give it a little bit of a crunch Color. texture mm -hmm. and, and good flavor too. Exactly. I call good it good flavor. At work, I call it make make sure there's love. Make make sure there's love on a plate. So you show what you do. <laughs> it is love on a plate, isn't it? You know. <laughs> Look at it. Beautiful. And so you have all these wonderful things that are displayed here as well. And I'd right. love you to, for you to explain. Well, these what are some, some, of these some of the hors d'oeuvres that we have on our menu. Things. Really? So What's in this one here? That one <laughs> is actually one of our menu items. Right. A cheating heart. A cheating heart? A cheating heart. <laughs> Literally, yeah. <laughs> and we and use that as it's uh, braised beef. Okay. Monterey Jack cheese Ooh. with our house-made barbecue sauce, then our house-made our house dressing on top, yeah. pan-fried, almost like a grilled cheese style. Is that why it's kind of toasted a That's bit on right. the top? And do you put anything on on it or just pan-fried? Oh, butter, 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 like, butter. like a grilled cheese. Oh, yeah, exactly <laughs> what it is. You can't make uh, grilled cheese without butter, in my opinion. Uh, no, no. Some <laughs> fats are opinion. good, and in <laughs> moderation, it's even better. Definitely. And so, so this is one of the menage. A That's quoi, one of the right? items. So now and we're going to go to the next step. Well. We have to speed it up a little Not bit. Not a problem. That'll be seconds. Okay. And because I know we're going to be coming back too. Yes. So at this point, you're doing Gar a little onion. Onion, garlic. Mm hmm. And then we're just going to saute it off a little bit. Yeah. And the prawns won't take long to cook at all because okay. of the way it goes. Okay. Candied salmon's already done. I okay. just have to place it on the dish Excellent. and finish it off. So as I mentioned, we will be coming back. Not a problem. And we are going to go to Brian on our main set. Wow, look at that. Thanks, Anna. I'm he here today with some people from the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program that's operated under the auspices of Volunteer Nanaimo. And I have uh, Greg Cowan and Park O'Connell. Greg, you're the administrator of the program. Can you tell us a little bit about what this program is and what it does? Yes, this program is uh, a nas of national scope. Uh, actually, there are over 18,000 people in Canada doing uh, volunteer uh, taxes for people, and um, we do prob uh, in excess of 500,000 uh, income tax returns in a year. In particular, in Nanaimo, we have 18 volunteers at the Volunteer Centre, and we did last year about uh, 2,000 uh, income tax returns for people. Now, your, all your helpers are volunteers, and they're, they're based in the offices of uh, Volunteer Nanaimo, as I understand it? Yes, that's correct. Um, we uh, <clears throat> have 18 volunteers who work um, uh, approximately 16 hours a week and on Fridays and Saturdays and uh, throughout the year. Actually, uh, the 16 hours a week are usually for the months of um, uh, March, April and May. And then we uh, pare it down a little bit in the summertime, probably maybe twice a month for the first couple of months, maybe June and July, and then uh, once a month uh, till the end of the year. And, and this program does operate all year round. You've done your training right now because you're heading into your busy season. That training is done through the federal government? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, the training is done uh, through a system of webinars uh, organized by the Canada Revenue Agency. And uh, luckily this year we've had uh, about 10 new volunteers. So we're up to snuff and uh, ready to go here with, uh, with the program starting on March the 7th where we'll be doing income tax for people. Parker, I know you've been involved for a number of years. This program's been going on for 16 or 17 years through Volunteer in Nanaimo. That's right. And I know you were one of the originators of the first to get this going here right, right in Nanaimo. Mm -hmm. how, how large was that program when you first started going? One person. <laughs> that was you? And shortly uh, thereafter, uh, another fellow came on board. Unfortunately, uh, he's had some health problems, so I don't think he'll be helping us this year. And I the might. growth of the program has probably been just overwhelming. Obviously, there's oh, yeah. a demand for this and the need for this service. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have the numbers, but as Greg said, 
Last year we did about 2,000 returns, and I think it's been increasing about three or 400 each year. Wonderful, wonderful. Greg, can you tell me how people go about accessing the program? How do they get involved, get their tax returns done, and how do they qualify? Um, <clears throat> well, uh, primarily, uh, we have a, a criteria, <clears throat> and it's established by the kind of revenue agency. It's for single people, they have to be making less than $30,000 a year. For couples, it's $40,000 a year. And for single parents, it's $35,000 a year. However, if they have uh, ch additional children, then they're, they uh, bump that up from uh, $35,000 by $2,500 per child. Um, there are certain things that we do do and certain things that we don't do. For example, we don't do small businesses. We don't uh, take people who have uh, income from, uh, for example, investments over $1,000. And um, uh, we don't do deceased people, that, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. However, so the, the crux of the program is to help um, uh, people that are not making a lot of money and um, that need help with their income tax because in so doing their income tax, it qualifies them for things like the uh, goods and services tax, uh, child tax credit, mm -hmm. things like that. So what they normally wouldn't do if they didn't do their taxes. Okay, so for the average person who wants to get involved, they can go on the website for Volunteer Nanaimo or they can yeah. uh, call Volunteer Nanaimo and yes. we have those uh, those uh, contact places on the screen right now. Okay. Um, they should contact, make a booking, and find an appointment time that's appropriate for them and for you people. That's right. I should mention that uh, we take bookings between Monday and Thursday only, and it's between 9 o'clock in the morning and 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Well, that's great information. Thank you for both of you for coming out and it's certainly a program that's wi widely needed in this community and has served made a provided service to all the residents of Nanaimo. So I'm going to head back over to Anna right now and she's going to have some more food with Chef Caron. Thank you Brian and nothing smells better than roasted garlic prawns and with a little bit of a splash of white wine you threw in there too. Oh, yes. Ta oh. Well you have to have white wine. Huh? The smell in here is absolutely amazing. <laughs> and <laughs> now we're going to be working on a vegetarian risotto and a risotto is one of my absolute favorite things in the world I must say. <laughs> I grew well, that's up a good thing. I grew that's up a great making thing. it needing it. <laughs> and tell us what you okay you've got some I got some garlic. Sauteing again. Sauteing, sauteing some more garlic. <laughs> In butter. More <laughs> butter, <laughs> onions. You know, like I said, if you have, if you're going to use fat, use a good fat, but in moderation. Yeah, don't go, course. don't put a pound of butter in there. Put a just little a bit. Just a little bit. Just for the flavor. Yes, of course. You got to, uh, you got to love it. And that's for me. It's good really flavor, important, isn't it's it? It's important. It is. If you don't have flavor, why, why you go that far? Now, Daniel, uh, can you explain to us a little bit about you do some volunteering? Can you tell us a little bit about some of the volunteer things that one of our that you as a chef does? Yeah. Do? At, at the restaurant, one of our philosophies is to give back to the community. Yeah. Yes, we we have patrons coming in and all that, but we also like to give back. Right. So as we're giving back to the customers, uh, to our communities, by like we volunteer at the Drag Dragon Boat f uh, s uh, Festival. Right. Of course. So yep. like on the Friday nights, they have the the meet and greet for the new paddlers and that on the Friday night. Excellent. And we'll. we'll We'll make the food for the for the mm -hmm. people coming in, the visitors and all that. So they have somewhere to eat and the first right. night they're there before mm -hmm. they go. And, and it welcomes them. Exactly. <laughs> and it's a meet and greet, them. right? And it's all exactly. about it. Exactly. So the That's part wonderful. you don't like, I'm sorry, but more white wine. <gasps> no, not the white wine. Look at that bubbling. Isn't that amazing? Wow. Yum. That's <laughs> incredible. And do you do some more other volunteer uh, things? We also do, I like to do the earlier. sugar festival, That's uh, the maple, maple sugar festival. Yeah. Um, we do, I like to help us, we get Malapis Pina students, they volunteer for the festival. Right. And I'm there to help supervise and make sure we have the food and all that. Mm -hmm. This year, the two chefs were part of the festival making the food. Food, but we also we um, made sure that the kids got experience. So, oh, you, so you were showing them. How show to them cook? how to do like oh. 
not, not wow. too many in school you learn how to do a lot of things but when you're hands on making cooking 150 it's, eggs 160 eggs yeah and it's walk, big. pancakes and <laughs> sausages and you know it's getting the big. timings just to show them like how the pressure how can it all be works I know I try to get my son in the kitchen as much as I possibly can and actually one of his favorites is risotto mm. as well now you put in some red peppers and the mushrooms of red course. peppers mushrooms and the risotto the, the rice pardon, exactly. pardon me. what kind of rice do you use it's a borio okay it's a borio rice arborio. <laughs> now we are going to be coming back yes we're going to have a little pause because of course right. risotto is a labor of love it takes a little bit it, of time it to takes make. love and we are going i'm the big mess is going to perform the bearded lady for us <laughs> enjoy <laughs> Hey, and I ride my old two-seater I go see Raul, that cow's never fool My friend, the fire eater So I surely went to the circus tent To hear about his latest fling But he looked half dead with his eyes all red And so I started to sing Raul, Raul, what's the matter with you? Raul, Raul, why do you look so blue? Raul, Raul, what's the matter, my chum? Raul, Raul why do you look so glum? He said, I'm in love with a bearded lady Gonna marry that girl, have a mustache baby Gonna buy a little house in the country somewhere Run my fingers through her long brown This is reason to celebrate. Oh, yes, my friend, you found your perfect mate. Raul, Raul, why aren't you smiling and glad? Raul, you fool, this is the best you both ever had. He said, I'm in love with a bearded lady, gonna marry that girl, have a mustache, baby, but she's in love with the muscle man guy. So these tears roll from my eye, 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 oh my. Ay, 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 oh, sigh. Ay, 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 don't cry. Love is a crazy game, everybody. Ay, 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 oh, my. Ay, 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 oh, sigh. Ay, 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 don't cry. Love is a crazy game. Woo! What? Oh, circus is coming to town. Look out. What? What? Before, oh yes, Raul, the ladies knock at your door. Raul, Raul, you're sure to win her desire. Oh yes, Raul, it's much easier than swallowing fire. He said, I'm in love with the bearded lady, gonna marry that girl, but she loves him, and I'm a bit afraid because he winks when he smiles. Kind of get the feeling that he might be. Hey, 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 what? Hey, 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 okay. Hey, 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 you don't say love is a crazy game. Everybody, hey, 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 no way. Hey, 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 you don't say. Hey, 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 well, okay. Love is a crazy game. I'm in love with a bearded lady. Gonna marry that girl, have a mustache, baby. Gonna buy a little house in the country somewhere. Run my fingers. I'm in love with a bearded lady. Gonna marry that girl, have a mustache, baby. Gonna buy a little house in the country somewhere. Run my fingers through a long brown hair. Da 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 
cha-cha-cha! Thank you. Thank you very much. Back to the big mess. Uh, boy, they make them want to get up and dance, don't they? <laughs> Holy smoke. Well, welcome, Angela and Leah. You're both with uh, the Nanaimo Unique Kids Organization. Is that correct? Yes. Now, Angela, I understand that you're a board member of this organization. Is that true? Yes, I'm the vice chair of um, NUCO. Very good. You're also a mother, and you have a child who's, who is being helped by NUCO. Could you talk a little bit about how, like, what led you to NUCO and give us a picture of all that? Yes, um, my daughter goes to NUCO, and she has for the past five years. Um, how we came to NUCO was that um, she struggled so hard in just the regular school system. She suffers from severe anxiety and she just wasn't able to cope and we were a family in crisis and my poor daughter was in crisis and as we got to NUCO everything was able to calm down because they were able to help her to calm herself and there's the sameness, the quietness and not as busy as a regular school and our family is no longer in crisis and I have a very happy mm. young child. That's wonderful, that's wonderful. So I guess NUCO looks after a range of children with a range of disabilities. Could you just tell us what some of those challenges might be, Angela? Yes, um, at the moment there's 21 children at the school and they range from disabilities from autism, FASD, Tourette's, anxiety, learning disorders, behavior disorders. It's just sort of all over the board and some children have kind of like more than one or two of them. So mm -hmm. we have a wide range. Lots of work to do, eh? Oh, yes. Well, well, Leah, you're the fundraiser. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Could you tell me yeah. what sort of things does uh, do fundraise for for NUCO? Mm -hmm. So NUCO faces really high um, financial barriers. We're, we're about helping families and helping kids, not about adding to their, to their plate by charging them high fees to, to get the services that they need and deserve. So um, I'm really working to, to overcome some of the financial barriers that we face. Uh, right now we're coming up to our summer camps program that offers seven weeks of summer camps where our students, NUCO students, get to act just like normal campers, but they get the support and the services that they need to do that successfully. It's also a service that's offered to other kids in the Nanaimo area mm -hmm. who have disabilities that inhibit them from attending um, contemporary, regular mm -hmm. uh, kids camp. So we're working on funding that as well as we're also working to lower our admission fees that, that families pay. So every month families pay a $500 fee to attend the Learning Center. and that can be really inhibiting for a lot of families mm -hmm. who already face other barriers. And like I said, we're, we're in the business of helping families, not making their lives mm -hmm. harder. So we're working to subsidize those fees for families who face financial <laughs> barriers and eventually just getting rid of them altogether. Mm -hmm. And lastly, we want a van. <laughs> we have a couple vans already, but it's really important for our kids to get out in the mm -hmm. community. So uh, we're working on sort of making that an, an easier activity for our center. Very good, thank yeah. you. So uh, could you talk a little bit about the, uh, the specific ways that NUCO has helped your daughter? Um, how NUCO has helped my daughter is, it's just amazing because they've helped her so much. NUCO is broken down into a daily of two components. The morning is academic and the afternoon is social outings and lifestyle skills and stuff like that. With my daughter, we were told that she would probably never read. With the patience and the help of the tutors at NUCO, my daughter is reading and she is writing. And just with their help, she's a whiz on the computer doing, you know, PowerPoint and this and that. She's even helping me, oh my God. you know, so it's just amazing. That is wonderful. Can we talk a little bit about volunteers? How do you, surely you must depend on volunteers. How does the NUCO recruit and train its volunteers? Could you just tell me briefly about that? Mm -hmm. So NUCO relies really heavily on a great group of volunteers. Angel's actually one of them. We're, we're run by a board of directors who are all, um, all volunteers. They volunteer their time. We have folks doing things from sort the recycling, helping with repairs on the center, running their own fundraisers, helping us with ours. Um, we really rely on the skills that, that those folks bring to the team mm -hmm. to run a successful program. Do you have anything to add? Yes, and if anyone wants to be part of the volunteers, just look at our website. And if you want to be part of our board, we're always looking for people to help us. That is fantastic. So yeah, you guys are ready to be congratulated. There's a lot of important work, it sounds like you're doing 
Um, what, you've got some fundraising things on the go, perhaps you could briefly just mention some of those for the people that might want to know. Yeah, of course. So like I said, right now we're really working on our um, summer program. So yeah. we have a raffle actually happening right now. Tickets are on sale. We're going to be in Woodgrove Mall on Monday, this coming Monday and Tuesday, March 10th and 11th, and we'll hopefully see you there. Awesome. Listen, is there, uh, how would people get hold of you? They've got a website and an email address? And yeah, mm -hmm. our website is nuco.ca and uko.ca. Our phone number is 250 585-5686 and our email is nucooffice at shaw.ca. Thank you very much, Lee and Angela. Great pleasure to have you on our show. I'm going to pass it over now to Matt and uh, Matt Carter. All right, thank you so, so much, Lewis, and uh, thank, thank you, you as well, uh, Angela and Leah, for being here uh, on the show, and thanks as well for all the uh, great work you do. Uh, just one of the amazing, uh, again, volunteer organizations here in Nanaimo, helping out a lot of folks. You are watching the show here on Shaw TV, we're about halfway through the show. It's also partway through our amazing volunteer party, where they gave me a little thought balloon to work with there. Oh, hey, it even hangs in there. Nice job, Jeremy. Uh, I know Kate's running around. Oh, no. That's unfortunate. Kate's running around right now trying to pop the balloons. I think the sandwich tray also went missing as well, interestingly enough. But anyways, uh, so far, we've, uh, we've talked food with acclaimed chef uh, Daniel Karen. We've talked about taxis and looked into volu volunteerism. We're going to do more of that as well. Uh, first, I want to give a shout out now to two fundraising events coming up here shortly in central Vancouver Island, put on by two Rotary groups. Hey, it's another service, or, or service organization that benefits from the strength of volunteers. First off, for all the foodies out there, we have the up, coming up the Taste of Oceanside. That's taking place in Parksville on March 29th. This food festival is going to feature 10 of Oceanside's finest restaurants. So what they're going to do is set up a number of tasting stations so you can just wander around casually, check out a bunch of different amazing food. you got some live music in the background. It'll be a silent auction, some prizes as well. So again, for those folks up in the Parksville neighborhood, check it out. It's the Taste of Oceanside, Saturday, March 29th at the Parksville Community and Conference Center. That'll be starting at 6.30 p.m. Tickets there are available at Marlin Travel and close to you, Ladies Fashion in Parksville. That's actually where Andrew Roberts gets most of his clothes, as well at the NR Insurance in Qualicum Beach, which is where I'm going to get health insurance here as soon as Andrew sees the show. And again, that event is put on by Parksville AM Rotary. Not to be outdone, the Rotary Club of Nanaimo Oceanside is hosting the 16th annual James Bond Fundraising Gala. And Kate Bergen is just going nuts over there. Anyhow, that event's happening on Saturday, April 15th. Or sorry, Saturday, April 5th. Let's get that right. Won the big old five there. And this year, this event is being put on with a bit of a different flavor to it. It's actually being held at the Grand Hotel as part of a resort stay and play theme. Attendants will be treated to a casino, probably a casino royale, of course. Uh, Oh, yeah, the Raymond liked that one. All right, some music, some dancing, auctions, great food, and I'm thinking that the Grand's legendary whiskey bar may have a bit of a role to play in this as well. Uh, the James Bond Galas, over the 16 of them now, have actually raised more than three quarters of a million dollars for youth projects and community projects here in the center of Vancouver Island. So, again, head on out, have a great time for a great cause. And that's the 16th annual James Bond Gala taking place Saturday, April the 5th, starting at 6.30 p.m. Tickets for that are available at the Grand Hotel, which is the venue, of course, up in North Nanaimo. And again, with that, a huge thank you to all these service organizations out there and the volunteer organizations that help out with community initiatives and community support and development. One such organization that is the United Way, and I believe, oh yeah, Anna's looking ready. Anna's going to let us know more what's going on with the United Way. So, Anna, over to you. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. And today I have Signe Madden, who is the Executive Director of the United Way here with us and for Central and Northern Vancouver Island. Now, when I did a little research and I looked at your website, this line really did it for me. Your mission, change lives and build our community. And I thought that was really wonderful. Now, welcome. Thank yeah. you for being here Glad and, uh, you know, our volunteer program. Exciting to be here. And what does United Way do in our community? Well, I know the show's about volunteering, so yeah. obviously uh, a big part of our job is to harness what volunteers are out there and connect them to agencies. So that's one of the pieces we do through Days of Caring. But uh, most of us know, uh, most people know uh, United Way. We raise a million dollars and we invest it back into 60 programs, helping 20,000 people this year in central and northern Vancouver Island. That's amazing. So that's a main, that's, that's <laughs> that a big is. piece. And so shout out, thanks to all our donors who gave through the fall campaign. The other piece, we're very active in the early years programming, Success by Six. We invest right. in half a million dollars into those kinds of programs, helping wow. parents and families. And the other half million we spend on homelessness, eradicating homelessness, helping people through homeless. Pretty important. Yeah. 
Now, going back to success by six, you mentioned that in March, March mm -hmm. 12th, I believe it was, That's right. that there's something happening. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, next week we have, uh, we're doing a community consultation around how to best invest in the early years for the next uh, three years. And so we've had a survey and 600 parents and families have got back on that. Next week on the 12th, in the afternoon at Bevan Park, from 1.30 till three, we're having a, a consultation. Anybody in the community can come out to that and talk about what they would like invested in parent for services for parents and kids. Wow, well that's really great actually. Yeah. Now, I know we were talking a little bit about volunteerism mm -hmm. and <laughs> I lost my note. Now, funding done for volunteer programs. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, I, I think uh, most of our donors, they want to see their money invested in a cost-effective way. One of the ways we can do that is uh, invest in programs that train volunteers and right. provide great services in a, in a way that doesn't take a lot of money. And one right. of the things, one of the uh, ways we do that is support programs like Big Brothers Big Sisters, Red wow. Cross, yeah. other agencies like uh, the Brain Injury Society. And so our funding, our donors' dollars go in. We provide expert training you know through the volunteer coordinators that we fund and then they train volunteers to deliver the services Wow! so it's a great. way to get the best uh, resources in the community in a cost-effective way right so there's I'm sure there's lots of opportunities for volunteering so it, we have an active volunteer group at United Way and we you know I would love for more volunteers to come forward uh, they can join our board there's opportunities on our impact councils to help decide where to invest our funds and we have people who come in every day of the week and volunteer at United Way to help at our office. Wow, so, that's amazing. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> that is really great. Yeah, we've got hundreds of volunteers <laughs> every every year who that's, yeah, donate that's great. to United yeah. Way. And we love volunteering. Yeah, we, <laughs> we all it's love great. volunteering. We really, really do. Um, what, um, okay, I lost my... <laughs> So maybe I'll just talk a little bit about a couple of initiatives that United Way is actively involved with right now. Uh, other than the uh, Success by Six program, we're also looking at coming up with a community plan around homelessness. So Nanaimo's done a lot of great work around homelessness, but there are still issues. Uh, we're seeing a lot of seniors who are uh, uh, facing homelessness, also a lot of families who are couch surfing. So right now, the city of Nanaimo, several agencies in town, we're going through a process to figure out where do we invest money to help those who are now facing homeless. Right. That's, so that's now, if, uh, if people would like to give today, mm -hmm. okay, how would they go about doing that? That's a, that's a great question. A lot of people think we only take donations through campaign time in the fall, but actually uh, we are fundraising all year round. So if you wish to give, go online at www.uwcnvi.ca and we'd be glad to take your donation. Excellent. And, now uh, if somebody wanted to contact you as well. Yeah, so they could give us a, come down and see us at our new office. We're at uh, unit number 9, 327 Prideaux Street. We moved downtown. Okay. Thanks okay. to a large donation from Century Group and the help of the city of Nanaimo and uh, so we have a brand new office uh, right downtown uh, where many of our donors are and Excellent. a lot of the agencies we fund. That's wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much, Signe. I really appreciate your being here today. Thank you for your support. Thank and you. Uh, we love volunteers, and, and without volunteers, United Way wouldn't be able to do what we do in the community. I know it's so important, isn't it? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And we are going to Matthew and the Bearded Ladies again. <laughs> awesome. So I'm uh, here with the big mess. Uh, thank you for coming to the show. Um, this is a father and son duo. Um, so I got a question for Kyle. Um, I see you play music with your father. What, father? What is that like? Oh well, you know Matt, playing with family. Family always comes with a few challenges, but ultimately, I'm super fortunate. I have a great time. My dad's a friend, a business partner, and ultimately a creative collaborator. And I'm super lucky, and I take a lot of ins inspiration from playing with him. So. Yeah, but we, but we squabble like uh, an elderly couple. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> you know. Yeah, it's a way, way to keep family close, and I understand your family is uh, fully musicians as well, isn't it? Totally, yeah. Um, I started out beatboxing, playing clarinet, and playing mm -hmm. drums. My brother leaned uh, more into heavy metal via the guitar. Awesome. My mom is a classical singer who later got into heavy metal, so she's... Uh, kind of heavy metal classical crossover <laughs> musician and uh, of course my dad the ever funky soulful uh, jazz musician 
Awesome. So I got a great variety throughout the family, eh? Yeah, yeah. It'd yeah. be a dream to make a, a collective song with all of them one day. Yeah, <laughs> one day. It'd be one big mess, I think, though. Yeah, I think so, too. <laughs> um, and uh, can you tell us more about the, uh, the box shop workshop? Right. So uh, you may have noticed that in some of my music, there's some uh, interesting vocal stuff going on. Oh, I, so, love, I love when he does that. Yeah, yeah. So I facilitate workshops that help people discover their voice and learn how to do that. Beatbox, scat, vocal play. We all get together in a big group and we learn some social values like listening and communicating and taking down our inhibitions and sharing our voice and ultimately just having fun getting funky and kooky. Awesome. And so yeah, I teach kids, adults, teenagers, the whole spectrum. Awesome. In various different environments too. Awesome. And how can we uh, find out how to uh, get a hold of that and people that want to get involved? Well, the best way to do that is through the Big Mess. Um, mm -hmm. And we've got a website at big-mess.com or yeah. info at big-mess.com is the email address. Oh, okay. I'm, I, so far, I'm not at the point where I have my own website, if you can believe it or not. That's okay. So, yeah, that's the best way to do it is through the Big Mess. One day, one day, and I hear you guys are from Chicago. Can you tell us more about that, Marty? Yeah, we're from what Chicago. You? you heard that, right? Yeah. And uh, we heard that, you know, being an American, we didn't know that Canada actually was actually up there. But then we heard about this exotic place. Mm -hmm. This is actually partially true. This is true. An exotic place called British Columbia. And we said, it's got to be cool. We did a little investigation, took a trip, and uh, we moved here. And awesome. it, was pretty, it was pretty simple. <laughs> Love it. Moved here in 1990, and I am a uh, Canucks fan, not a Blackhawks fan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, awesome. sorry. <laughs> sorry. So we've got a Blackhawks fan in the audience? <laughs> <Ooh>. Awesome. <laughs> okay, so they're not doing that well this year. Right. Well, that's okay. Yeah, you know. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. And you guys have a favorite song that you've uh, played together or you've uh, produced and created? You know, we produce our songs. We, we do them on our home computers, and if... If they're not a favorite, we don't play them. I mean, that is yeah. that that's accurate. We we just love the stuff that we do. We can't, and if we get a new tune, we just cannot wait to, to kind of present it. Yeah. So the favorite song is probably the one that's newest to our repertoire awesome. because we haven't, you know, it's overdone fresh. It, yeah. We haven't overdone it. But even the ones that we've been doing since the very beginning, we're yeah. still stoked on. We find new ways to make them exciting. Awesome. Well, I do want to thank you guys for uh, coming to the show, um, playing your music, and um, we're uh, going to listen to another song called Let's Eat. Actually, like back in 1980, Kyle, before you were even a glint in my eye, I lived on a goat farm in 56, Arkansas. 56? What the heck is 56? Well, it was the school district also the name of the, of the city. Uh -huh. But I lived on a goat farm with my brother and his wife, and we had wood stove and wood heat cozy. and goat milk. Sounds cozy and nice. Yeah, it was cozy and nice. But one day, my sister-in-law was out there in there cooking uh, breakfast, and I was sitting on, on the front porch. And I done did. I had a guitar, and I done did write this song. What inspired you to write this song? I was hungry. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I was real hungry. I can smell the, the, yeah. the goat-like odors yeah. coming through. But something's on the fire. Mm. Something's on the fire. Something's on the fire. Let's eat. Oh yeah. Oh, something's on the fire. Let's eat. I can't hardly stand it. Let's eat. I can smell it. Breakfast on the table. Let's eat. I want to join you. Whoa. Breakfast on, on the, the table. table. Let's eat. Mm. I can't hardly stand it. Let's eat. Yum, yum, yum. Scooby doodly doodly yum, yum, yum. Scooby doodly doodly yum, yum, yum. Scooby doodly doodly yum, yum, yum. Scooby doodly doodly, I can't hardly stand it. Let's eat. Marty, cook us up something to eat there. Well, I got jelly on my hand <laughs> and syrup on my nose. Oh, no. Well, I can't hardly stand it. I feel full down to my toes. Five hours later, I'm back on my feet. I'm sitting at 
at the table and I'm screaming, let's eat! Yum, 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 scooby doodly doodly yum, 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 scooby doodly doodly yum, 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 scooby doodly doodly yum, 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 scooby doodly doodly, I can't hardly stand it. Let's eat, let's eat, let's eat, Marty, come on! Thank you to the big mess. And today we're going to talk about broom busting. I'm here with Pam Agnew, who's with Broom Busters. And Pam, can you tell us what is Broom Busters? Well, Broom Busters is a bunch of volunteers who really have come together to try and eradicate broom on Vancouver Island. It was started in 2006 in Qualicum, and the testament to those volunteers is in the eight years that they've been doing it, they've almost eradicated broom in that area. So it's really an inspiration and a challenge to all the volunteers. There are 500 of us currently across the island who've done 40 community cuts in 2013, and it's really spurring us on that if Qualicum could do it, each of us can do it in our own communities. This whole issue of broom, which is an invasive species, is a big issue on Vancouver Island in particular. 
It is a very big issue. Uh, the story goes that it was um, Captain Grant um, who brought the seeds over in about 1850. The story varies whether they came directly from Scotland or via Hawaii, but they were planted in souk and since then the rest is history. And it's a big problem. The reason why is it's a threat to our food security on the island because as soon as it gets into farm fields, it takes over. It's a threat to our forests and it's also increasingly a threat to people with severe allergies. So it's really a no-brainer for us to get out there and cut broom. It's fun to do and it's incredibly rewarding. Okay, so the whole issue of getting volunteer groups involved in in this battle against broom. Uh, we've got some pictures that yes. maybe you can uh, make comment on. We're gonna bring them up on the screen and it shows your Broom Busters group in action. Yeah, the, and first, the first one was a North Nanaimo plot. This is a bunch of volunteers in Qualicum. Um, some more volunteers there. Uh, a really diverse group of people. That's one of our young volunteers and I think that's important. Does anyone, you know, teens can help? That is along a hydro line near Parksville, and that's what used to be a forest. And as soon as the trees are taken down, then the seeds take root. That's another example of how it takes over a hillside. And the last one there is really showing us what a fire hazard broom can also be. So the whole issue of broom, um, it's timing, isn't it? It's when the, before they go to seed that you have to do this work on getting rid of the broom plants. Absolutely, that's critical. We always say you cut broom in bloom, and the reason is is you want to do it before it goes to seed. The seed is very dangerous in the sense that studies show that it, it's still viable for 40 to 60 years. So part of us in eradicating it is we cut it down before the seeds form. It's when the plants are the most vulnerable, and then they have less chance of coming back. And the other key is how we dispose of the cut broom, because we don't want people cutting the broom and then putting it in with their regular garden recycling because then it makes it to the tip and it comes back as compost. We don't want that. So we want to make sure that all that broom that's cut is collected properly and disposed of properly. So obviously you use these loppers, your crews go out, cut the broom, get rid of it, pile it, and then you work, your group works on getting rid of it and so it's not put into our local compost. Exactly, and the group works very closely with all three levels of government. We have immense support from, for example, the city of Nanaimo, and they have previously been able to supply us with places where we go and dump the broom collectively. They pick it up and they dispose of it through Harmac. It's actually burnt as fuel in the mill. Okay, good. Now, for people to get involved, uh, we have on screen uh, your website and how people can uh, get involved as well as uh, the phone number for your founder and executive director, Joanne Sales. So That's it. That's how they get involved. They can certainly get their own crews together and get out and get rid of that room. They can indeed, and we welcome everybody and really want to say thank you to all the volunteers who've gotten involved so far. You're making a difference. Good. Let's throw it over to Anna and back with food. Thank you, Brian. And the first, th first thing I'd like to start out saying is I, I feel like a bearded lady. I must apologize to the big mess. I made a big mess. And um, my apologies. We're back and we're going to finish off our risotto and it's smelling so amazing in here, let me tell you. So, Chef Daniel, what are we, what did you do well, while we had a little break? Well, we had a little break. <laughs> I just added a bit of uh, more cheese and more uh, spinach. And when we do the risotto at the restaurant, I pre-cook the risotto. So the rice from a raw state to cook it for this segment kind of thing, it takes about 45 minutes to cook risotto. So it does, yeah. when you have four minutes, you can't quite do it right. So at the restaurant, even for the lunch service, we'll pre-cook it and saute our ingredients exactly what we did here. Right. And then just add and make to what we want plate it and serve it so people could have actually a nice risotto for lunch for they, lunch, they don't have to wait 40 minutes to well I've waited that long yeah. <laughs> before yes. let me tell you and when I was growing up one of the things that one of my jobs as a kid was to actually stir the risotto because yeah. it I mentioned earlier it is a labor of love it's time-consuming but it's absolutely well, delicious the whole idea behind the risotto is just you have to get all the starches out and all the flavor and if you do it too fast you're missing steps and, and therefore 
you're not getting the what you want the now, love a question do you have do you wash your rice or you don't this rice i don't okay yeah, um rodeo uh, rice i don't wash okay. some people do right um i prefer not to because i want the starch the starch uh, that's As what you i mentioned, want exactly right? excellent yeah. now i'd like you to explain what oh this wonderful look at these beautiful lovely things are while well, you're plating of course What's stuffed in these mushroom caps? The mushroom caps are made with a chicken farce, which we make at the restaurant. And it's uh, ground chicken, herbs, um, sometimes a little bit of bacon. Mm. So, and we just tweak it up and I stuff it in, into the mushroom caps, and raw mushroom caps, cook it, right. then glaze it with a sweet chili sauce. Mm. And you so called it a farce? Yeah, it's, a, it's like a moose. <laughs> <laughs> a farce, a joke. It could be all kinds of things. It could be. <laughs> well, we had a menage a trois earlier, right? Well, exactly. So there you we go. Let's have some fun. Now, and also, uh, yes, we can. And also on this plate, there's something else here. These there's little mini toasts. The mini oh, toast. Look. There's wow. a candied salmon. <gasps> Candid whipped sand? candied yeah. sand and wow. wrapped up, uh, whipped up with a mascarpone and marsca and cream cheese. Are you sure you're not half Italian? <laughs> no, I'm really French Canadian. Because <laughs> <laughs> the mascarpone, yeah. right? Oh, it's really good. And the sweetness from the mascarpone goes well with the candied salmon. Oh, so it's nice it would and be sweet. incredible. It is. It is. We wow. got a lot of good feedback on it. Wow, I can't wait and to come to your restaurant. the lemon on top, it gives you that zing. The little zing? Yeah. Here, I see that. That yeah. is absolutely incredible. Wow. And there you Look go. at that plated. Absolutely so amazing. Keep nice and simple. And uh, wow. at the restaurant, we would serve that with either a soup or a salad if you wish. Right. So you have a choice. So it's not just a heavy meal for lunch. You end up with a nice, nutritious. Excellent. Well, I'm, can I? I have to have a little taste Come because on. it's that looking. Or your will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, all the cameramen <laughs> will, won't they? They'll be all coming. Mmm. Mmm. Buonissimo. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> buonissimo. Now, did you bring anything else that you can tell us a little bit about? What's um, over on these little plates? Uh, these plates are basically the same things. What we just did. I just oh, okay. uh, spread it out. Wow. Um, at the restaurant, oh. we'd like... Oh, oh. <laughs> I knew he'd come in. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. I'm surprised he didn't come in for the menage what? a trois earlier. I <laughs> 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 do. Oh, that is well, awesome. Isn't that... In oh. <laughs> My taste buds, I can't wait to come to your restaurant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, if people want to, you have a website. Do you have a website? We have a website. Excellent. And it is? Two chefs. At two chefs at dot ca. And does it actually tell you what the menu is so people um, can? On the website, we have different uh, varieties of menus and what we things we do. Right. Um, that's a work in progress. Uh, being a small business, I know. I, it takes time. So what I have right now is I have a gentleman come in tweak it more every six months and then we keep it up like that Excellent. but it's a good way to just call us at the restaurant or come by come by I'm, I'm there <laughs> come talk to me all right beautiful thank you, thank you. so much chef Daniel. thank you so much I guys really appreciate, appreciate it. it thanks for having the show yeah, yeah. Anna, thanks so much for having this as well this mm. is going to be awesome mm. all right <laughs> I, I do have uh, some, some questions though um if i figure if with that with that dish there if yeah. you ever open a food cart you should call it the uh, the riz automobile yeah. oh, okay the riz automobile <laughs> yeah uh, maybe have a spicy yeah. dish there called the al dante inferno oh yeah dante inferno which you know sometimes spicy yeah. dishes make me sort of sweat a bit but uh <laughs> my styling gel auto keep my hair up oh, okay so, styling gel auto keep my hair oh by the way did you hear that the blue jays actually just got some really inexpensive uh, starting pitching looks great for this now they just have to sign some cheap batas oh. cheap batas oh, oh for gotcha's sake settle down all right anyways if you're all getting upset maybe we could just sing like a nice song you know like uh no 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 key on heaven's door oh. No. Oh, come on, Raymond. Jeez. Uh, guys, Eric Clapton sang that song. He's a pro. <laughs> Leave my probe alone. All right. So, anyway, I guess these jokes are sort of past the prime, and, uh, you know, I'm going to have to answer my really angry Uncle Alan and my Auntie Pasto after the show. So, <laughs> I'm going to try to wrap, wrap it up now and get back to the volunteer party. Thanks to all of the volunteers, again, who uh, contribute to the show here. Oh, so awesome. Couldn't do it without you. 70 shows in now. And we also um, want to thank you for watching. Hey, you can actually find photos and videos of the show on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash the show on Shaw. As well, you can find uh, previous episodes on the Shaw TV Center of Vancouver Island YouTube page. And if you've got a great story, idea, so want to be on the show, contact our producer, Melissa Hall at melissa.hall at sjrb.ca. All right, time to send it out. One more song from the big mess entitled Beat, 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 Beat Box. You are watching the show. Right here, Shaw TV. Yeah. Oh, well, I, I didn't quite realize this was going to be an actual complete song. Well, way to put me on the spot there, Matt. I thought I was going to be doing something just kind of jibber jabbing in the background. Well, 
not quite realizing I was gonna be the man under the spotlight. But sometimes you really gotta step up. You gotta step up. Get out of bed and bring your A game to the party, you know. Just regurgitate some gibberish. Like so. Right now.